hey, I'm here to drop off my car for an oil change. Awesome. It'll only take about an hour. And what number can we call you at when we're done? Awesome. Yeah, you can call me back at 555-555-5555. Now that's a callback. What's up, everyone? My name is James Q. Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics, and I do a lot with JavaScript concepts. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you all about JavaScript callbacks in about five minutes. So the first thing we need to know inside of JavaScript is functions are first class citizens. And actually a callback is just a function that you pass as a parameter to another function. That function will do some work and then call that callback function back. Just like we talked about with the oil change example earlier in the video, you say, hey, I want you to do some work for me. And then you give them a mechanism to call you back when they're done so that you're not there waiting on that work to be done the entire time. So let's dive into some code and take a look at a couple of examples. So the first one I think that is the most common is the set timeout function. And you've probably seen this before. So inside of set timeout, you pass it a function and then the second parameter is some sort of delay. So inside of your function, you may do something like log hello. All right, so I've got this running with the live server. So this is actually live reloading and you can see this logging out to the browser. So this whole thing is the callback function. It's a parameter that's being passed to set timeout. Now we could move this to its own uh, separate variable. So we could call this log hello and still pass this in the exact same way. So we could pass this in now and this will work the exact same way as long as we call this after that function has been initialized. So now you'll see. Now, one thing I do want to check is if you know how the basics of asynchronous JavaScript work. So I'm going to give you a little example here. We'll say two, we'll do a console log of one and we'll do a console log of three. So a little quiz for you, in what order are these things going to be logged out in? And even if we do this, so what order were those log out in? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want details about how or why it maybe doesn't work the way you expect, let me know and we can do a video dedicated to that. So let's take another look at an example of callback functions. I'm gonna create an array with a few names in here. So James, Jess, Lily, and I don't, we don't need ands and arrays and uh sevi so this is me my wife and my two dogs so you've probably seen array functions like for each before so these actually use callbacks as well so with the for each you pass it a callback function that accepts a parameter of each individual item that we name here as name and then we can uh, log out each one of these so we'll just log out name now this is a shorthand with es6 arrow functions if you're not familiar with those let me know i can do another video on those as well but what we're saying is for each one of these names, this is the function that we want to be called as the for each is iterating through each one of those names. So this should just log out what those names are. Now, if we were to build our own, I think this is a fun example to show you how callbacks work. Let's build our own. So let's say const my for each, and it's gonna take in two parameters, an array, and then a callback function. Often you'll see that listed as a parameter as CB. All right, so what are we gonna do in here? Well, we're gonna do a basic uh, for loop through an array. So we'll say, I've got a little snippet that'll help, but this will iterate through each item in the array. It'll get each element. And then with that element, and we're missing an equals up here, with that element, what we're gonna do is call that callback function. So we'll, pa we'll call CB, and then we'll pass in the element of the array. So this is all the for each is doing. So what we can say is we can call my for each, we can pass in the names array, and then we can have a, a callback function here that is going to accept the parameter of name, and then we can log out that name. So I'm gonna uncomment the first one, and this should do the exact same thing. So we see those logged out as well. So a callback function inside of here, when we're creating our own for each, is we define this function that takes in two parameters, an array, and a callback. It iterates through each element, and then it calls the callback. This is the same as how the other array functions work like map, sort, reduce, filter, et cetera. They iterate through each item and call the callback for each one of those individual items. Now what we've shown so far are synchronous examples in JavaScript. I wanna show you an example of an asynchronous example as well. So let's say we want to load a Pokemon from the Pokemon API. So uh, we can uh, have a function that's gonna take in an ID and then a callback function again. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna call uh, fetch, and then I'm going to copy in the URL for the Pokemon API. I like the Pokemon API because I like Pokemon and it's free, so it, it makes for good examples here. 
So we're gonna make a request to this uh, using the built-in fetch method. And then we'll call uh, dot then to handle the response. And with fetch, you need to convert the response to JSON. And then we'll dot then to handle the actual uh, data there. So what do we do when that data comes back? Well, again, somebody called this load Pokemon function and told us to tell them when we're done by calling back their callback function. So now we can call the uh, callback function with the Pokemon or with the piece of data. And then uh, we will uh, call this function below and we'll pass in an ID of 56. I don't know which Pokemon that is. And then we'll pass in our own callback function, again, defining this in line. And this callback function, as you can see, should take a parameter that I'm going to name Pokemon. And then we're just going to log out the Pokemon variable. So we'll see if we get back this Pokemon data. We do, and Pokemon 65 is, or 56 is Mankey. So cool. So callback functions are just functions that get passed to another function as a parameter. That function will do some work and then call the callback function to say, hey, I've done my work. Now it's your time to do whatever you want with this thing. Going back to the example of the getting my oil changed, I say, hey, I want to get my oil changed. They say, okay, we'll call you back when we're done at this number. Then I know to go pick up my car and do my work and take it home and go about my day. So JavaScript callback functions in about five minutes. Let me know what other topics in JavaScript you'd like to see covered in five minutes. I'm going to make this a bigger series. So let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions, share that as well. And I'll catch you in the next one.